I was born a fighter, a scrappy little kid on a Brooklyn block. I bopped and weaved my way through life as I stood up against the neighborhood bullies. I always hated bullies. There wasn't a dare I wouldn't take on. As I grew older, I learned from the streets. I had a knack for the ladies, a strong right arm, and a love for rock and roll. I opened the Chicago nightclub and booked big name bands like the Grateful Dead, Led Zeppelin, and The Who. During the 68 convention in Chicago, I watched firsthand as the government raged out of control. I managed Bette Midler, founded the Manhattan Transfer, and was fortunate enough to win an Emmy, a Tony, and my films received six Academy Award nominations. I produced Trading Places, The Rose, and Wise Guys. But today, I am standing in front of the camera to fight for the rights of all Americans. Because today, I am frightened for the future of the country I love. Ladies and gentlemen, mad as hell, Mr. Aaron Russo. everybody. Hello. Welcome to Mad as Hell. I'm here tonight because I'm sick and tired of what's happening to my country. I'm fed up and I feel an overwhelming need to shine a light on to illuminate our country's problems. And the most fundamental problem we have in America is that it is no longer a free country. And it is fast becoming a totalitarian state. I know those are strong words, but they're true nonetheless. Let me illustrate. Imagine you're calmly driving along in your car, minding your own business. obeying all the traffic laws. And all of a sudden, in your rear view mirror, you see a police car coming up behind you. How does that make you feel? Safe and secure? Or uncomfortable? Let me see a show of hands for uncomfortable. Amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. See, I remember being taught in high school that America was different because it was founded on the principle of liberty. That means nobody can make you do things against your will, including the government. And government's function was to protect that liberty. Everybody, stand up. Stand up. I want you all to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. for which it stands. It doesn't say, and to the democracy for which it stands, and to the republic for which it stands. America was founded as a constitutional republic with some democratic principles. A republic is where 99% of the people can't take away the rights 
of 1%. And that's why America was called a free country. Your rights were guaranteed and absolute. Do you hear our elected representatives telling you our country is a republic? No! no. In a democracy, 51%, the majority, can take away the rights of 49%, the minority. That's not freedom. Who's ever in office determines what rights you have. Like a ping pong ball bouncing back and forth, back and forth. One says abortion's legal, one says it's not. One says gun control, another says no. Taxes are too high, taxes are too low. Balance the budget in seven years, five years, nine years, three years, one year, 18 years. Affirmative action, no affirmative action. Speed limit 55, 75, it's safer, it's not safer. It's insanity! This creates a deep and dark division in America. Left versus right. Rich versus poor. Gender versus gender. That means man versus woman. <laughs> what we need is a set of principles to live by. No matter who's in office. And we have it. It's here. It's called the Constitution. Yeah. Restore it. Don't ignore it. People often ask me, Aaron, are you a liberal or a conservative? a Democrat or a Republican. Those are just labels. They don't mean shit. <laughs> the right question is, Aaron, are you free? Are you free? No. Are you free? No. Are you free? No. You own your lives. No. You don't own your life? No. No, no government owns you. They do. Well, that's what has to change, isn't it? You see, you see, government is the problem, not the solution. A big centralized government, like ours has become, manipulates us into strict obedience in the name of some contrived greater good. Social engineering. That makes me want to puke. <laughs> because that's the big lie. That concept is the basis for the destruction of America. It is the antithesis of everything we stand for. There is no greater good than each of us being free. That is the ultimate good. Yeah. And that's why America was created. So each person can follow their own destiny without interference or force from others. Instead, we have federal agencies with massive police powers. They just gave the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms 13 ground attack jets armed, armed with Sidewinder missiles. What are they going to do? Call an airstrike on Fred's smoke shop?
That, that's why my grandparents left Europe, to come here, to get away from governments who forced them into obedience. But now, here, here has become there. You have any music for me? <laughs> Enough of that shit. <laughs> Every election, Politicians are sworn into office. They take an oath. They take an oath to defend the Constitution. So help me God. So help me God. So help me God. But after they swear to God, they dismiss their oath and ignore it. And ignore the Constitution. Why? You know why? Because the Constitution limits their powers over us. They don't want us free. They want us controlled, like puppets. Little marionettes, they string along and do this, do this, do this, do this. Sons of bitches. <laughs> After the Oklahoma City bombing, the President and Congress called for the immediate passage of the anti-terrorist bill. The time is now to enact this important legislation. You can be sure that terrorists around the world are not delaying their plans while we delay the passage of this bill. It sounds great. Get rid of terrorism. Yeah. Yeah, on the surface. But scratch the surface of this bill, and we discover an overreaching power that is akin to dictatorship. Ten year sentences for the crime of supporting the lawful activities, the lawful activities of an organization, the president unilaterally, you hear that word? Unilaterally declares to be terrorist. And it's not appealable. He says it. That's it! Gets me so mad. In addition, this bill allows five, five hand-picked judges, hand-picked federal judges, to hold trials in secret. In secret! Behind closed doors. Wait, wait, wait. Without a jury. And the defendant, and the defendant isn't even present at his own trial to defend himself. You know why? Because he doesn't even know it's happening. Okay? He doesn't even know it's happening. That means. You, you, you could be on trial right now and not even know it. <laughs> and you, you were just found guilty. All of a sudden, you're gone. All of a sudden, people are going to start disappearing. They're whisked away. What happened to Sam Jones? I don't know. <laughs> he was at work yesterday. <laughs> Does this sound like liberty to you? No! This bill is about furthering totalitarianism, not stopping terrorism.
If you take a frog and drop him into a pot of boiling water, he'll jump right out. But if you take that same frog and put him in a pot of cold water and slowly turn the heat up, he'll sit in that pot of water, lulled into complacency, until he boils to death. Ladies and gentlemen, we are that frog. And the water's beginning to boil. Did you hear we're being fitted for a national ID card? Good. And it will be digitally encoded with the retina pattern of your eye or with your fingerprint? And every American, every American will be required to carry one. <laughs> required is another word for forced. According to this bill, come 1999, all employers will be required to receive authorization from the federal government before hiring any new employee. The social planners are forcing you to get their permission before you can hire anybody. And your name has to be on their database to even get a job. Do you want your name on their database? No! I sure as hell don't and won't! Amen. They'll tell you from here to doomsday they're defending your liberties. They're lying! Don't listen to what they say. But, but, pay very close attention to what they do. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson said, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Well, how many of you have been vigilant? Or do you do whatever the government dictates and just accept it? Freedom is something you have to fight for. It's not automatic. In the history of the world, America has come the closest to being a free country. Let's not blow it. Speaker of the House Newt blew it when he urged fellow members of the House Representatives to destroy the Fourth Amendment by passing H.R. 666. Do you know this bill will allow the government to invade your home without a search warrant? No. Congress and the President have no authority to ignore the Constitution. But they're doing it. The major media never reported this. Why? Free press, please. <laughs> it's a controlled press. And what they don't tell you is costing you your freedom. I'm on a roll. 
Why are you guys there anyway? I can't figure this out. <laughs> Congress has passed the FBI wiretap bill. This requires that wiretaps be pre-built into all phone switching equipment by October 28, 1998. So that the Justice Department, so that the Justice Department can listen in on any phone conversation in America, sitting in their office, pressing some buttons. Let's see what Aaron Russo's saying today. Sons of bitches. Then the FBI asked for additional funding from Congress so they can tap into a million and a half phones simultaneously. And when you tie that into HR 666, 666, yeah. <laughs> little nasty number there, they won't even need a court order. I think each of those freedom-loving members of Congress deserves a rectal adjustment. <laughs> now that's liberty! Yeah. <laughs> Almost everybody today is a criminal, according to the law. Let me explain. The federal code is over a million pages of fine print. It's been estimated that it would take 23,000 years to read. Okay. Yet, ignorance of the law is no excuse. <laughs> we are responsible for all these laws. It's just a question of who and what law enforcement decides to focus on as to whether you go to jail or you go to jail or you go to jail. How does that make you feel? Well, if you're black, I guess you already know. Sons of bitches, I can't stand them. I mean, I can't stand them. Do you know there are more people in jail today in America than any other country in the world. And 70% of them are there for victimless crimes. How can you possibly have a crime if there isn't a victim? <laughs> Idiots. They spent a fortune. They spent a fortune trying to put Heidi Fleiss in jail. <laughs> and yet, at the same time, they let out a rapist who's victimized over 200 women. When they asked the rapist if he was going to rape again, he replied, That is information that will come out in the watch eventually. You know, so right now the cards are still in the air. Well, thank God they got Heidi Fleiss off the streets. I feel so much safer. <laughs> In goes Betty Crocker, out goes Jack the Ripper. <laughs> it's insanity! It's insanity! In Washington, there are entire buildings that just hold books of rules and regulations. B 
big, big buildings full of bureaucrats <laughs> whose job is making sure you and everyone else follow this endless stream of rules until we choke to death. <laughs> so much pressure on us <laughs> that we have heart attacks and die. Wait, do you think this is the government's way of subsidizing the medical profession? <laughs> <laughs> but Dr. Kessler of the FDA wants to subsidize not only the medical profession, but the drug companies as well by outlawing vitamins. <laughs> he wants you to get a prescription just to buy vitamins. How oh, Tesla! <laughs> oh shit, did I say that? It must have been a vitamin C deficiency. <laughs> but nothing to worry about. I have social security. <laughs> Can you believe what they've done to Social Security? I mean, can you believe it? From a voluntary retirement plan, it's evolved into another mandatory tax. Have you ever heard of a retirement plan where the money is not in your name? <laughs> <laughs> and the custodian can spend it at his will? And you can't leave it to your heirs? <laughs> and, and, it's their way of keeping track of you to boot. Try running a private fund like that. You'd be in jail. But the government can do it. Because they can do whatever they goddamn please. And we let them. We let them. And then there's the IRS. <laughs> it really sucks. to say sucks or steals, they're both so appropriate. <laughs> they tax you your whole life. And when you die, they tax you again on the money, you leave your family. These people make pigs look anorexic. <laughs> The San Francisco Chronicle reports, by the year 2010, federal income tax and Social Security combined will take 84% of everything you earn. Now, I ask you a question. How can you raise a family if parents are supporting the government instead of their children. Of course morality is declining. Of course crime is soaring. How could it not? Repressed people strike back. And there are a whole lot of repressed people in America today. Repressed by the government? Yes. yes! Let me see a show of hands. This country is just 
It's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. <sighs> Have you heard about that? The general agreement on tariff and trade? The so-called free trade agreement? <laughs> it's 22,000 pages. It weighs 365 pounds. That's a free trade agreement? One paragraph, we have free trade. <laughs> no one, not even your congressman or your senators read it. It would take four senators just to lift the thing. Jose, bring out Gat. Bring out Gat. <laughs> Dump it. You okay, Jose? I don't want you to get hurt. I'm the star here, who's like... <laughs> and two arch rivals running for president, Dole and Clinton, pushed everybody to sign it. I'm pleased to announce that an understanding has been reached with Senator Dole. For the past 50 years, our country has led the world to create a more open and a more prosperous trading economy. I will be writing a personal letter to each of my Republican colleagues in the Senate, enclosing all of this material, enclosing all of this material, asking them to read it very carefully and suggesting that in my view, we ought to be all in support of GATT when it comes up next week. They don't know what it says! <laughs> Do you understand the implications of that? It's time to wake up! And I'm here ringing the bell because nothing works. Health care, welfare, taxation, education, inflation, deflation, politicians lying, people dying, police state, subjugate, corruption, 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 corruption. freedom is an old American tradition. We will not be denied. Recently, the Associated Press reported the results of a national poll asking Americans if they trusted their government. 70% did not. One of the reasons this figure is so high is people are becoming more aware that we have all but lost our rights to due process and the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. A man's home is no longer his castle. Tonight's show is going to focus on asset forfeiture. Using that catchphrase, government agencies can lawfully storm your residence 
and seize all your assets. That includes your home and your bank accounts. Last year, last year there were over 250,000 asset forfeitures. That's 5,000 every week. And 80% of those victims were never charged with a crime, much less proven guilty of anything. And in some cases, people were even killed in the process. Captain DeWitt here. Yeah. I'm on a uh, search warrant with the Hidden Hills crew on this marijuana eradication thing. Yes. And they just uh, looks like uh, 927D here. At the location? Yeah. Some they, body there? No, it, we put them down. We killed them? Yeah. It's scary, you know. I never, ever would have thought that I would witness my husband executed, literally executed third world country style. Donald Scott died in his living room on October 2nd, 1992, gunned down by police. Now his widow says that Donald was the victim of a law that makes the seizure of private land so financially attractive to law enforcement agencies that they have begun to assume private citizens guilty to proven innocent. The story begins here at Trails End Ranch, 200 acres in Malibu, California, current value five million dollars landowner donald scott was a multi-millionaire due to a family inheritance he was handsome prosperous and married to francis plant a woman half his age but their passion for each other blinded them to age differences i would tell him he's 61 going on 16. he had so much energy and he was just so much fun to be around we had the best time we just had a ball. I don't think any two people have ever been happier. But their idyllic life at Trails End soon became a gothic nightmare. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to Rancho Sierra Vista, Sat We on behalf of the National Park Service. In the 30 years since Donald Scott purchased his ranch, the National Park Service had bought up every available land parcel surrounding Trails End, making Scott's land a choice morsel for federal acquisition. The Park Service judged Trails End crucial to complete its federal land acquisitions agenda. Friends say that the Park Service had approached Donald repeatedly about selling, but he refused. Donald always had a feeling that um, the government would do um, something, or the National Park wanted this land to the point of where they would do anything to get this land, even kill him. Ironically, Scott predicted his own death, but it was not by the Park Service. Two years ago, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department claimed they had received an anonymous tip about Trails End Ranch. Captain Larry Waldy ran the narcotics unit at the time. We then uh, got a, a tip from a reliable informant that, in fact, that marijuana, large amounts of marijuana were growing there. It was 1993. L.A. County was in fiscal crisis. Law enforcement budgets were scant, and like other agencies, the Sheriff's Department was scrambling for extra funds. More and more, they were forced to rely on the proceeds of drug busts to supplement crippled budgets. In effect, our civil servants became revenue producers. Discovering drugs on private land allows a law enforcement agency to seize the property, sell it, and take the profits. That is called asset forfeiture. It is highly controversial in that it gives an incentive to law enforcement agencies to say that drugs exist, to pretend that drugs exist, even when there aren't any. Financially motivated to confirm the anonymous tip, Deputy Sheriff Gary Spencer ordered aerial reconnaissance and DEA agent Charles Stowell complied. In a fly over the ranch, he claimed he saw 50 marijuana plants attached to lines suspended from tree branches. There is virtually no way that Stowell could have seen through that canopy of trees. Uh, it's like a, a rainforest. It's impenetrable. Michael Bradbury is district attorney for Ventura County. His investigators studied the Scott case for months. Their findings were explosive, concluding the L.A. Sheriff's Department was motivated in part to seize the ranch for the government. 
I think Agent Stowell was under tremendous pressure from uh, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office in the person of Deputy Spencer uh, to come up with uh, the opinion that marijuana was being cultivated on the ranch. As a matter of fact, after uh, Stowell initially said that he had seen marijuana, he called Spencer back and, and said, I am not comfortable with you using my name and you have to corroborate uh, me. Despite Agent Stowell's reservations, the Sheriff's Department marshaled ground teams from the National Park Service and the Border Patrol. But even their ground surveillance turned up no marijuana. Nevertheless, law enforcement still commandeered a search warrant and ordered the troops to move in. 27 people were at the scene. There were at least five different agencies. We had the National Park Service there because we worked with them in dealing with the marijuana eradication program. Uh, LAPD was there uh, and DEA was there. Coupled with that is the National Guard that we worked with. There was a crash and the house started shaking. And when I first realized it wasn't an earthquake, and I saw a man's face looking at me through the window. Here these men come running towards me and I'm backing into my living room screaming, don't shoot me, don't kill me. My husband heard me and he came out into the living room screaming, Francis, are you all right? And he had his gun pointed up in the air and he looked at me and they yelled, put your gun down, put your gun down, put your gun down. And that was the last thing he said and they they just murdered him. This picture of these men was taken moments after they killed him by their own sheriff's department. And they're smiling like, I don't know what. The troops searched the entire property, including a grove of trees where the 50 marijuana plants were allegedly spotted by aerial reconnaissance. And there was no marijuana. But we found some lines suggesting the block and tackle method uh, on some of the trees in that general vicinity. There's no evidence that there were ropes and lines there. I will never be able to be convinced they came here to serve a search warrant. So why did five government agencies storm the house that morning? Was the raid on Donald Scott's property part of a government conspiracy to obtain his land for the Park Service under asset forfeiture laws? Does that sound too far-fetched to you? Not if you consider the findings of the DA's office. Curiously, the district attorney's investigation yielded these documents. They were passed out during a briefing before the raid, a property appraisal of the 200-acre ranch and a map, including a notation by Agent Stowell that a neighboring 80-acre parcel had recently sold for $800,000. The district attorney doesn't understand why a search for drugs would include such information unless seizing Scott's land was law enforcement's motive. I think this is simply a case of uh, a good officer, uh, very aggressive, who lost his moral compass, uh, saw an opportunity to uh, have his star rise rapidly in the department by seizing a significant asset. In fact, current Park Service land acquisition policies across the United States are under scrutiny, considered heavy-handed, and in some cases illegal. As for Donald's murder, Frances insists that her husband was in the process of lowering his gun when he was shot. It was just pointed up in the air. He didn't have a chance to, to obey their deadly command of put your gun down anyway. Um, they just... They just blew him away. And Francis's nightmare just kept getting worse. Months after Donald's murder, the ranch house burned down. Francis says it may have been arson. The house is burned down because the National Park, again, the National Park refused to let the Ventura Fire Department um, put out the fire. They could have made a very simple fire break. They had all their equipment there just to make one little fire break and the National Park stopped them. They said it is against our park policy to disturb the natural beauty of our park land. And now, guess what? Now the IRS wants to force a sale of this land to make us pay death taxes. So let me get this right. One agency of the government comes in and kills your husband. 
And now that he's dead, another agency of the government comes in and wants the land. Well, they haven't met me yet. They're not going to get this land. I couldn't believe this could happen in our country. I couldn't believe my father has fought in two wars for us to be safe in our homes and for this to happen in America is, it's unbelievable. That piece was absolutely frightening. And the fact that the two deputies who shot Donald Scott are still in service only goes to prove the point that the government is unaccountable. We are very fortunate to have with us on today's show three of America's foremost experts on asset forfeiture. Brenda Grantland is a graduate of George Washington University's Law School. She presently serves on the board of directors of FEAR, Forfeiture Endangers American Rights. And Jeffrey Steinborn is a graduate of Yale Law School and a prominent Seattle attorney who specializes in asset forfeitures. Judy Osborne is a hooker from Santa Monica Boulevard. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> A little. You can have your asset seeds for that. <laughs> have your asset seeds for that, too. There you go. Um, Judy Osborne is the author of Spectre of Forfeiture. She defeated the government's attempted forfeiture of her home and now edits the Fear Chronicles. Is what happened to Donald Scott a rare occurrence? Many of the things that happen to Donald Scott happen every day. Uh, there are people that are getting killed because of the war on drugs and because police want to seize their house. There are uh, many instances where the police uh, lie to obtain a search warrant. And there are many times when the raids are made on places where no crime is being committed. Mm -hmm. So how does civil forfeiture differ from criminal prosecution. It's so easy to forfeit something civilly. All they have to do is say that we want it and come and get it. And at that point, it becomes your burden, you the property owner's burden, to hire an attorney if you can find one who understands the law and to go there and prove that the government doesn't have a right to your property. So it's enormously different. Really, all the government has to do is wish for it and it's theirs until you can go try to get it back, which is very difficult. Wait, so you, wait are you saying to me that under civil forfeiture, the government doesn't have to prove anything? No. There's no due process of law. No, that's correct. That's what I'm saying. So they can seize your property based on hearsay, and hearsay is really nothing more than a police officer standing in front of a judge and swearing to something for which he's not accountable, and that's enough to get the papers to seize your house. Then you have to go back to court and try to prove that your house or your property is not tainted by some unlawful conduct. So how does the, the, do the police or the authorities decide whether a case is civil or criminal? Well. I think nowadays they have to think more seriously about criminal because of some new developments in the law. But up until about a year ago, the courts had ruled that civil forfeiture of your property was not punishment, and therefore you, the government didn't have to follow the usual rules that they have to follow when they try to punish you for committing a crime. So if, 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 a, if the authorities have the option of saying this is criminal or civil, they can always say it's civil, because it's easier for them to take it. Absolutely easier. And that's what they do. And that's why, for the last 10 years, the government civil forfeiture program has really been running amok. What you have here is the government, well, the looters are in the wheelhouse. And they're using the government as a way to loot the country. And the, the result of it is that the police, in situations like this, really run around like children without adult supervision, taking what they want. In about 90% of the cases, there is no recourse. The property's gone, and, and, and whatever rights may have been violated along the way are simply ignored. Fortunately, uh, assassinations are rare, but they're certainly not unheard of, and I'm sure we haven't seen the last of them. So they can, uh, if they want to, they can just come in and say that we're planting, they, they can just plant evidence and well, they say... Can, they can do that too, but they don't have to. They don't they need don't evidence. They don't need they evidence. They don't need evidence. They need a cop 
We all know how honest cops are. We need a cop <laughs> who's ready to swear that somebody reliable told him or her that you, there's pot in your house or that you dr sold some drugs or committed some crime and that the fruits of that crime are invested into your real estate or in your bank account. So if some informant says Aaron Russo is growing marijuana in his backyard and the cops come and raid my house, they can seize my home, my bank accounts, based on the fact that some informant said that. That's an correct. Informant, an informant who stands to gain 25% of your seized assets. Whoa! Wait, wait, wait a minute. No! You mean the informant gets a piece of this action? Yes, e either in reduced ch j jail time in some cases, but most often up to 25% of the forfeited assets. It's right oh. there in the statute. It's right there in the statute, yes. So I'm going to call up on everybody in here. Hey! <laughs> This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Let's seize their house. I'm getting 25% of that? And that it places the owner in the untenable situation of prying, trying to prove a negative. I challenge anybody here to prove there was no marijuana in your closet on this day two years ago. Prove it. That's the scary part about it. And what's, what's happened, you know, Aaron, we've been talking about the Constitution, but this demonstrates very clearly the Constitution is what the judges say it is. And if the judges say this is constitutional, then it is. And so one of the problems, really, is that the judges, uh, we have to have some judges who have the courage to talk about what your rights are and to be offended by this. But the Constitution is very plain English. It's not very difficult to understand. Well, you would think so, but historically it's always been nothing more than what the judges say it is. And, and uh, this generation of judges uh, seems to have a low, uh, a low esteem for some of these rights that we hold so dear. So who's vulnerable to forfeiture? Like Everyone. Who? Anybody. You know, there are lots of cases now where third parties are being having their assets seized because of something someone else did. Say a, uh, a landlord-tenant situation, for example. You may own an apartment building and someone living in your apartment may be selling drugs. Uh, the police will come to you and say, get that tenant out of there within two weeks or we'll take your property. And you go to your lawyer, you find out that the local landlord-tenant law requires you to give your tenant due process. So right. you start going through the, the due process that you're required to give under the local landlord-tenant law, and that's not fast enough. They come in and seize your property. There's a couple in Southern California, retired Army, um, I forget his office. He was an officer, and this was his retirement property, and he lost his entire rental property because he couldn't get the tenant out fast enough for the to please the cops. If, if you're a landlord, the situation is even more frightening than that because they can search your rental property illegally. Just kick the door down without a warrant. And if they find something growing there, then they can seize the house. And you, the owner, the landlord, don't have the right to object to the illegal search because you weren't living there. I, see. I just had a case like that last week, yes. And they, they are not embarrassed to stand up in court and say, yes, we're going to take his house, and he has no right to complain that we kicked the door down without a warrant because he wasn't living there at the time. In fact, reporting your, tenant, your suspicions of your tenant's illegal activities to the police is cause enough to have your house forfeited, forfeited because that puts on the record that you knew that there was something illegal going on. Right, right. So you, <laughs> you can't show your innocence. So you're in a catch-22 situation. Yes. So how does an ordinary citizen protect themselves? You try to get the laws changed. That's, right right that's now, really everybody is vulnerable. You can have your assets forfeited for making an incorrect statement on a loan application. Fish and Wildlife not long ago seized a tractor for, under EPA laws because it ran over an endangered rat. Oh, it didn't, it didn't help the rat. I heard about that. The Vietnamese farmer was tilling his land with his tractor. He ran over a kangaroo rat, and the government came and took his tractor. They tried to put him in jail for two years for running over a kangaroo rat. This is unbelievable. Do you know why I'm so mad? Do you understand what's going on here, guys? Yeah. I mean, this is sickening. This is the, the and it's our country. If, you're, if you are a member of a corporation and one individual in that corporation is indicted for, for instance, a money laundering operation, under the government has a theory of tainted money, where his tainted money contaminates all your good money like a drop of ink in a glass of water. And so, therefore, the whole corporation's assets can be forfeited based upon the alleged illegal activity of one member. What is, what is this about legal fiction, that property has no rights so they can take it? How does that work? Can somebody tell me? That's the excuse they use to take away our constitutional rights and to, <clears throat> to create procedures that made it easy for the government to win and almost impossible 
for the property owner to win. But explain what it is for me. Do well, me a favor. Explain this, is a base, this is a very old concept that goes back to um, biblical times, basically. If, if an object, uh, it's called diadond, if an object is used to kill a man, then like a sword is used to kill a man, then they would say, well, that sword was guilty, and we're going to take it away from the owner and destroy it. And it, the owner's rights, and it disappear. And they're, they're using that fiction. It's a lie. A fiction but, is a lie. But as an example, I, I heard about a man who lost his airplane because he said the airplane had no rights. It does, that doesn't matter if the man owned the airplane. Said the airplane has no civil rights, so we can just take it. Or we can take his car. Or we can take the money because property has no rights. Ignoring the fact that people who own the property have the rights of ownership. Right. That's the legal fiction. Am I correct? Right. There is some, some good news that the courts are beginning to back off of that posture a little bit. In fact, there's a case on the way to the U.S. Supreme Court right now that may back it off a little bit and may hopefully force the government to start treating forfeiture like any other punishment. I mean, if they want to put you in jail, they have to give you the right to counsel. They have to give you a live witness to cross-examine. They can't try to punish you twice for the same crime. None of these rights apply when they're taking your property. But there is hope that either through legislation or some cases headed up with the Supreme Court that things may change. Explain to me about the 30 days, how that works. That you have 30 days to, to, to uh, argue against the seizure, and if you don't do it within 30 days, that you can't get it back? Different uh, jurisdictions have different statutes. In, in Washington, it's 45 days, and under federal law, I believe it's 30 but days. But do me a favor, but explain it to me. Once everybody. you're given some kind of notice, and under federal law, sometimes your only notice is a little blurb on the back pages of USA Today. They don't have to actually serve you. So they, they take your stuff, then they, they give you stuff, notice. They put their notice in USA Today, and if you don't respond within 30 days, then you are deemed to have, been, have defaulted, and you can no longer complain about it. So it's, let me understand the scenario. So they, t they come in, they see, they come to your house, they can break the doors and down. They back the moving truck up to your door and they put everything in the, they take the socks out of your drawers and the art off the wall. All right, so they take my underwear, which they don't probably want, but, <laughs> but anyway, so they, 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 they load out your house, they take everything you have, and then within the next two years, they have to notify you, right? And then from the time of notification, you have 30 days to get your assets back. Well, in Washington, they got 15 days to notice you. There's, a, ver notice. There's a very important part about that that I think that you're overlooking. When they take your property, they could hold it for a long, long time and then send a notice out when you happen to be on vacation or whatever. You've got 20 days not only to file a claim, but to pay a cost bond of 20 percent, I mean, sorry, 10 percent of the value of the property in order to even fight to get it back. But if they so just, in order if they, to get a hearing, you've got to pay for it in but, advance. But if they just took everything you own, how can you pay for anything? Well, you're, well, you in, can't. you're indigent, uh, and of course you can't hire a lawyer, but because it's a civil case, you are not a, appointed a, a counsel. Yeah, so you have no money left to hire a lawyer. Correct. They don't give you a court-appointed lawyer, so you can't even fight back from in, in the time allotted. And the law is so complicated that the majority, I would say, of lawyers, of lawyers don't even know how to fight civil forfeiture. This is unbelievable. So people and, can't fight it themselves. And which federal agencies have the power to do this? Most of them. And that's and the reason that, that most forfeitures, people abandon or give up their property or lose their property without ever going to court, without ever getting a day in court. They just lose it. And though the precedents were set by drug laws, there are over 200 federal forfeiture statutes, and many of them don't even con contain the exemption for innocent owners that the drug laws contain. Where does the money go when they take it all? The police get to keep it. Whoa! Whoa! Wait a minute. Not only does Some guy calls up and says, hey, Russo over there is doing something wrong. He's sleeping with his wife or something. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Sex is not allowed here anymore. Okay? And then they come and raid your house. They take all your assets. Right? And then they get to keep them. But the informant gets 25% of it. The informant gets up to 25%. So if they take my car, they keep the car. Do they sell it? Does there some cop some take cop it? Some cop can drive it if they want it. Do you get this, guys? Do you get what the hell is going on here? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for my, for my guests over here? Anybody have any questions yeah. they might want to know? Yes, please. You have, tell, you have told us what is happening. Please tell us how to defend ourselves against this. We want to know the remedy. I think... Unfortunately, our, the only remedy is the government. We're not going to have a revolution in this country, so you're going to have to trust the people running the country.